Well, for more on what that means, we go tonight to the single most informed source that we're aware of on this topic. Lou Elizondo ran the Pentagon to a task force. He joins us tonight. Lou, thanks so much for coming on. So, Tucker, always my pleasure. First, what, do, what do you take from this? What, what have we learned? Well, this is certainly a historic moment for us, for our country, and I think uh, for our military and our intelligence community. The, the government has formally and officially come out and informed Congress that these things are, A, they're real, and two, that they're not ours, uh, and that they seem to be performing, at least some of them, as you say, in remarkable ways. And I, I'll, I'll tell you something else that I find very interesting. You mentioned it, out of the 144 cases, we only only were able to solve one, but there's there's two subnotes to that. And the first one is when you look at this report very carefully, you'll notice that really the reporting only began in around uh, the March 2019 time era when when the Navy established its reporting requirements, and then later on in November 2020, maybe about eight months ago, with the Air Force. So we have 144 reports really concentrating in just the last year and a half involving only military equities. And then the, the report further stipulates that a large majority of reporting really goes unreported. Why? Because of stigma and taboo, which is something that you and I are both very familiar with involving this topic. So one can surmise that there's actually a lot more than just 144 incidents involving the Navy in just the last year and a half, let alone, as you say, since the late 1940s. So the report all but says what is obvious to anyone who thinks about this, which is these are not from a foreign military. And maybe the lackadaisical approach or the disorganized approach on the part of the military to looking into this suggests that too. If, the, if we thought these were Chinese, you know, we'd be on it. And so we don't think they're Chinese. They're not Chinese and they're not Russian. So they're extraterrestrial. I mean, what's the other, I mean, let's just let's just say it. I mean, what's the other explanation? Potentially. Well, it, 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 you know, Tucker, that, that's that's a fantastic question, because uh, as we've said before, when I was in ATIP, this is something that could involve outer space, inner space, or frankly, the space in between. And that's why we've always said, let's keep all options on the table. The more we learn about quantum physics and, and this remarkable universe we live in, the more we realize that our that our current understanding of the construct of the cosmos uh, is, is constantly changing, is constantly evolving with, with new information, new knowledge that we get. I think from, from this report's perspective, uh, if you notice the very first line uh, in the report is, this is a preliminary report, um, which is indica indicative of the fact that hopefully there will be other reports forthcoming. Um, in the report, they stipulate that we need a lot more effort going into this. This needs to really be, as, as we've been saying, a whole of government approach, not just the military, not just the intelligence community, but as we see here, F FAA, perhaps NASA, Department of Homeland Security. We could even go into, the, for, for example, the academic and scientific communities like the National Science Foundation and maybe establish something that looks something like a, like a federal lab construct where we can really get the best and brightest to really look at this, this incredible enigma we're now facing. Well, yeah, and it's a, t a testament to how incurious our leaders are that we haven't done that like decades ago. But back to my previous question, is there, in your view, without speculating as to, I guess, what these might be, let's just take off the table what we were pretty sure they're not. I mean, they can't be human, can they? And if they are, I well, mean, if these were human, which humans would be doing this? It, it, yeah, it's, it's looking... Uh increasingly like this, this is probably not the case. But the question is, what is it? And of course, people jump to speculation from the Pleiades or something like that, when in fact, one of the hypotheses when I was an ATIP was that this this could be as natural to Earth as we are. We're just now at a point where, where technologically we're advanced enough where we can begin to actually collect information on it and, and begin to, to try to figure out what it is. There's been other hypotheses that these things are possibly from underwater. Uh, and as, as outlandish as it may seem, uh, these are, are there are there is some anecdotal evidence that supports you know all of these observations. So again, what we want to do is try to get as much data on the table as we can before we start eliminating what something. Of, what something of course, is. of course. But uh, let me let me re just rephrase it without getting into all the theories. About, you know, if it's not human, sure. then it is something. I, mean, I have no idea. But I'm just fixated on the idea that given the data we now have. It doesn't seem like these could be human. Have you heard, or from a human source, have you heard anybody offer up a plausible explanation for how human beings could be responsible for these sightings? 
No, and, I, and I'll share with you even a little bit more insight. When I've had my private communications with some of my former colleagues and some people that are that are still in Washington D.C., uh, the conversation that these being non non human vehicles and controlled vehicles, but still intelligently controlled by something or someone, is certainly not off the table. Uh, th these are conversations that are absolutely occurring. Uh, but but again, because as the report stipulates, because of stigma and taboo, um, no one's having this conversation really publicly yet. In fact, if you read I think it's probably towards the end of the report. They say that our airmen still don't even want to have this conversation with colleagues because they fear fear retribution, and 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 that's that's part of the problem having this conversation. Yeah, this is becoming a country where no one can say anything that's obvious, and saying the obvious is a prerequisite for thinking and for advancement. And so I'm so I'm just so glad that you do. <laughs> You're one of the few.